All right, so here is another dictionary. This is the part two series. It's called the Analytical Hebrew and Chaldean Lexicon. Uh, this dictionary is very different from the other dictionary that we were using. And uh, the reason why this one is so much different is because the way this one's set up is here in the beginning, it gives you some grammar charts that you can go through uh, that talks about the different um, issues with Hebrew verbs, nouns, irregular verbs, and gives you some verb charts here. Now, when you go into the actual dictionary uh, itself, when you're really starting to get into it, uh, this is how it looks, okay? So basically, this dictionary is based upon the I don't know at all grammar, and or maybe I'm learning grammar and I need a lot of extra help, okay? Because maybe I see a word, but I have no idea what root is. Now, remember, when we were looking over here at this dictionary, we had root words, we had letters, and we were able to find the grammar form of it. We were able to see what the word means. And also, we know that these were based upon the root letters. So if you look at the Aleph, Lamed, Mem, you know this thing has to do with something with silencing. And then, of course, you go down, and then there's different aspects where it changes. Okay? And tells you the different meanings that were created out of it. This one over here is different, okay? The way this one works is like this, okay? You have a Hebrew word, for example, avidan, and it tells you it's masking it, but then you go over here and you find that this is one of the roots of the word, which is the word av. Now, obviously, it doesn't tell you the other root, which is the word dun, which means to judge, but it gives you at least one of the roots here. Well, if we went over here, for example, um, to for, let's say here, Avi. Avi, it tells you it's a he fill form, so you know that by looking at this, you get to know the grammar of it, that this is the binion called he fill. Uh, the binion or the, the grammar Hebrew verb chart list you'd be looking for. Uh, if you go to look at the verb charts I have, you would look up he fill, okay? Then you would understand you have to look for the future form. So this is a future form of the word. First person, that's why the Aleph is there, but it tells you here, first person. And then it tells you that if a Vav is put in front of it, that it's just the Vav or the Vav conversa, which means it either makes it a past tense or it's just a regular Vav, which makes it just um, and, okay? Now over here, it tells you the root. So over here, it says... The root is bet, vav, aleph. Now, obviously, if you look here, this is in the aleph. So I have to actually go to bet, vav, aleph to know the meaning. So if I go to bet, vav, aleph, I have to go all the way through my dictionary, flipping through here to find bet, vav, aleph. So we're going to do that real quick. We're going to find bet, vav, and aleph. And we're almost there. Okay. So we're in bet hey, bet vav. Okay, so here we go. Bet vav aleph is the root. Now, the meaning is to enter, go, or come. Okay? Um, go in, probably more better off just to, to come or enter. That's what I would use uh, translation wise. So, bo is the root, and this is what it would be translated in the form. So it tells you. For example, it gives you a future. It says, like here, future, yavo. Um, but it tells you the basic meaning. Now, the problem with the meanings is you have to understand that this is the infinitive form. So the actual word bo that you see here, we know that when we looked at it, it was in the future form. So we wouldn't obviously say two because two is infinitive. It's like he went to the store. Okay, that's infinitive. And that's how majority of all of every verb translation is always translated into when you look in a dictionary. It's always using the infinitive form. Um, it stinks because you have to stop and tell yourself it doesn't mean to enter. You have to use the past tense form or the future form to whatever verb you're looking at. So vo literally means enter or come. So if you say avo, I will enter or I will come. All right. That's what how you would have to translate it. So you'd have to make sure it's not in the infinitive form. You have to put it in the proper um, verb form for the future.
So this dictionary is really good because if you want to uh, know, for example, um, a root, you can go through and just practice learning the root. It will tell you immediately underneath this, which is very similar to this version. This version over here, however, is a lot more longer and it's got a lot more sources to exhaust what this word was used, what passage used it in. Whereas here, you're not really looking at anything with regard to passages, you're actually looking at just the root. So book, okay, or book, sorry. Book here says the root word's not used, but bakak, to empty. So it's saying that this is um, a root word that could have existed um, based upon the fact of the letters. Um, but this is the actual root it comes from is bakak. And then it tells you the two different nouns that were created from it. One of them was feminine, which means boka, which emptiness or devastation. The other one's mevoka, which means emptiness. Okay, and both, they're both feminine. It tells you that, okay? So you can see from here, you can actually take the root word and go backwards utilizing these nouns and go back to the root. Same thing with you go up here to any of the other ones you find. You can see the word boots. It says root not used. It's in Arabic to mean white or shiny. So boots means fine white linen or hyssop or, or, or bysis. A beitza, which is the word for egg. Uh, and beitzi uh, was the name of a man, which was used for white. Okay. So you can see that based upon these, you can actually learn root words and you can learn different words that come from that root. Um, however, you don't have any, you know, other passages to tell you context of what could this word mean in this context or whatnot, and that can be a problem. But that's why this dictionary is good for, um, I looked up a passage, I found this word, and this is how it was spelled. And so if you went down here and you said, okay, I saw it spelled like this, bet, vav, resh, alef, Bore. So what is bore? Well, then here I can look up and say it's call. It's a participle, which means it's a uh, a verb that also can function as a noun as well as a uh, present tense. Um, it's um, a causative, so it's, it's an action. And then I know that um, it's singular and masculine, okay? And then, of course, over here, there's my root, bet, resh, alif. So if I know bet, resh, alif, what that word means from the root, then I can easily translate the word and I can also know how to translate it based upon the actual form. Very important because when you're actually reading in Hebrew, one of the things that you really do need to know is you need to know what actual tense is this actual verb. Is it future? Is it past? Is it present? And this dictionary will actually tell you exactly what it is, if it's future, past, or present. And it will also, like I said, tell you the root. So when you're looking at this word, you definitely know over here at the end, there's your root letter, okay? Bet, resh, aleph, that's the root letter you're looking for. So you want to know the meaning of it, just go turn back over to uh, 